Hi, lately I've been working on a solution for a problem we are having at the factory and I'm not allowed to take pictures there so I'll try to draw it out. Over there we have a very wide, very thin sheet of plastic right? that keeps coming down so this is around 2.4 meters across and it comes down at more or less 100 meters per minute. Uh, our goal there is to split this wide sheet of plastic into slimmer sheets of plastic, right? And, and we also need to have a certain gap in between each sheet of plastic. So we jab some blades into the plastic, right? A couple blades there, a couple blades there, and a couple blades there. So we end up, in this case, with four product rolls. This will be wound and will be turned into plastic rolls. And we get this waste product, these slim trims that come out of this of its guts, right? So we pull these these trims out around these guiding wheels, which are wheels like this. So we pull them out around these wheels, and then it goes into a couple pulleys, obviously connected to a motor. So these pulleys will pull all the trims automatically and all of that goes into a suction line so this is a, su a suction pipe so one of our problems is when one when one or more of these trims break so if this guy breaks these two rolls will be now garbage until we fix the, the whole thing but sometimes we cannot detect this, right? Uh, actually, a lot of times we cannot detect detect this on time. So the, the whole machine needs to be stopped and restarted. And that's very expensive and very labor intensive. So we hate it. And uh, my boss pretty much hates it too, of course. So this is a problem. Another problem is when the suction pipe fails. Because what happens to the stream when this fails is that it starts mounting up around here and more and more and more until it ends up winding around one of these pulleys. So now we need to stop these pulleys, we need to stop the motor, pull all the blades out and well we're gonna have a lot of waste products. And that's the best case scenario because the bad case, worst case scenario which is the one that happens more often is that we don't get here in time so this will stop out, uh, by itself and the the trims will go down and end up right wound up around uh, some important role and yeah it needs to be stopped and that's a pain so here we'll need an alarm and here we'll need another alarm telling telling us that this has stopped and if possible we not only get an alarm but something that will pull the guy the the trims into the ground right so here's what i came up with first of all i divided this into two problems right and let's start on this side right so we have the the e white sheet of plastic the blades jab into the plastic the guiding wheels and the trims around the wheels right so these are the wheels what i did was to print these uh 3d covers these encoder covers right so now each wheel is an encoder wheel and of course we'll be able to tell how fast each wheel is turning right so this is one of the parts that goes into the machine right there's a, a similar to my hand part that goes in, inside this there's a, an IR sensor here and of course this goes there right and it can read the wheel spinning so the logic here will be if one or more wheels start slowing down but one wheel at least one wheel does not slow down well that means one of these trims have broken right so that's the, the general idea and it's pretty simple. The other part of the problem, here we have the two pulleys, right? God damn it. The suction pipe, yeah, there it goes like that. And under here, I'll 
put an array of infrared sensors like this one well kind of like this one this is this was the the first prototype so this goes under the suction pipe right under the suction pipe so it stands here on top of these of this pulley goes one of these covers like that and the the thing about that is that we can push air into the into the this chamber and it comes out of this slit right so air can come out in this direction okay and and under on the on the under pulley we can we can I will put one of these um, cover things and again we push air into this and it comes out of this slit so and there's also also an LED right so and it can be slightly adjust adjusted so here's the idea if this this pipes uh, loses suction the trim that is supposed to come in here will do stuff like that right it's gonna start agglomerating in front of the pipe very quick very quickly this will trigger actually this will break the line of sight between this led and the sensor right and that will trigger the pneumatic system which will blow air out of here and most importantly out of this one this one is uh, actually much more effective than this one because out of if um, how do I say that in English um, when when we have a uh, high speed in a fluid we get low pressure so here we will we'll have quite uh, some low pressure and it will pull the trim into this part and then away from it that's why there is a this uh, surface here so we end up with the trims go coming actually pulling pull down very with actually a pretty decent force well so that's the idea this is you know when it comes to 3d printing it, it was a lot of work and all that stuff but the the principle is quite simple if the line of sight breaks we can it activates the the alarm and the pneumatic system which will pull the trims down at first i thought i was going to breadboard the first prototype but quickly realized that was not gonna happen as you can see there there's way way too many pins to no just that no so what ha what what ended up happening was that I, as i started building the, the system the whole system it started growing but then later on i had to add some stuff let, let me just show you this this is the populated pcb and well this guy this esp8266 will take care of the encoders five encoders and this will take care of the six uh ir sensors right so as i started building this i started with these transistors in the r and channel mosfets and they take five volt positive to turn fully on so i had to add an um what's this called a level shifter because it these are 3.3 volts this takes 5 volts so this will shift 3.3 to 5 volts however later on in the design i i realized i was going to need two p channel mosfets and these take 10 or 12 volts for them to fully open so the these take voltage to close and these take voltage to open so i so i had to add a couple bgt's just for these two guys and you know since i had to add two bgt's for these two guys i could have had three more bgt's for these three guys and completely skipped but you know when i got this all of this was already already built and yeah whatever right so it's not perfect but it will be as reliable as as if it were perfect uh what else what else we got a this this one diode here is for reverse voltage protection this one diode is 
this is going to be a 12 uh, so 12 volts in and 12 volt out minus the voltage drop across the diodes however this 12 volt out might in the future see i don't know 24 volts or something so i i had to protect the pcb with this guy uh, we have a 5 volt regulator just for this guy a 3.3 volt reg just for these two guys and that's pretty much it now i kind of want to show you how the software works now before that just for a quick glance of the the whole thing mounted uh, this is a step down converter so it, it will feed only 12 volts to to this pcb a reset button off and on the sound alarm and uh here this is the power input so you can the, a dc power input uh, my might i add i don't i'm not i haven't tested actually this guy but i think you know up to 30 volts it should be fine this is the solenoid output yeah this is the, the solenoid output so this will have the same voltage that you feed in the the system so the system is supposed to be 12 volts but imagine you oh you only have a 24 volt power supply if you have a 24 volt power supply the solenoid valve will need to be a 24 volt valve but everything else stays uh, stays the same 12 volts or whatever voltage the whole system works this is the output for the led for this led it has its own its own buck converter inside one of these tiny guys so instead of going with a resistor i just adjust adjusted the the voltage on the work converter precisely for what the the led needs <coughs> excuse me the, uh, this is the input for all the the sensors on the the, uh, the encoders and this is the input for the, the the array of ir sensors that goes under the suction pipe as for the the software let's start in with this guy you can probably check it in the description right but it might change over time so the way it works is it will check each sensor one at a time thousands of times every second and when every anything crosses one of the sensors it will activate the pneumatic system and it will not sound the alarm as of right now because uh sometimes we get we might get false triggerings and you know maybe the suction only fills for a fraction of a second and then everything resumes to, to normality so what the rule i set was to first of all activate the the pneumatic system regardless of it being a false alarm or not because that's important so the the, the trims don't get you know wound up around the pulley and three seconds later i think two or three seconds uh, two or three seconds later it will check again if the line of sight is still impeded and if it is now it will sound the the alarm and still keep going with the the air the air will only stop blowing when the line of sight is cleared for i think at least 10 seconds because if this is working let me show you if this is working nominally right so here's the light and here's the sensor array if this is working normally the the trim will be pulled down into the ground and it will always interrupt the line of sight for for at least one of these sensors so that means okay i gotta i gotta keep still blowing air that's fine then if we fix the the suction pipe we can still we can pick the the trim and the up it goes into the suction pipe the line of sight is cleared and if it is cleared for 10 seconds hey okay turn everything off and i mean i turn the alarm off and the pneumatic system off and that's fine okay easy to understand i hope as for this side of the problem it's a little bit more complex so this guy will be uh, working with interrupts and the way it works is it will read every single wheel for half a second and save to memory waits half a second and then reads again every single wheel for another half a second and of course saves to memory then it compares so let me draw it out 
just to give you a more intuitive perspective. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this will be reading. Reading. One, maybe I should have read out, I don't know, whatever, English. Reading. Two, of course. Oh, what am I doing? 500 milliseconds. 500 milliseconds delay. And another 500 milliseconds. Okay, so do, during 500 milliseconds, the device will read every single wheel and save to memory. So we'll have wheel 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Of course, this is going to be the same. We have a 32 click resolution per uh, revolution. And usually the, the, these work at around 10 ro rotations per second, but it's not, it's not quite there, nor is it required for every single wheel to be the same. One can turn at 15, uh, 50, 15 rotations per second, whatever. What we are comparing here is the change of speed over time, not the, you know, the actual speed. So well, these perform more or less 320 clicks per second, but we are only checking for half a second. So they usually put out around 160 clicks, more or less. We can have a certain tolerance. Actually, the tolerance I, it's, that's hard-coded right now is 3. You'll see later why. And, of course, half a second, reads all the, the wheels, puts in memory, waits half a second, this half second, waits, and now it reads again and puts it all to memory. Let's pretend that, I don't know, wheel 0 broke uh, the trim, so this wheel will be slowing down and it will obviously put out a value more or less like 155 but all the other wheels will be more or less the same well within the tolerance 160 let's 161 160 fine now what the computer does is co it compares every single wheel to each other actually it's it subtracts the second reading from the first so wheel 0 155 it takes 155 from 160 160 minus 155 obviously is going to be 5 so this guy is already larger than the tolerance but the, the alarm won't sound just yet because maybe we have we are uh, bringing down the speed of the, the whole production line so what it does is it uh, it checks if any other wheel has slowed down. So if all other wheels have slowed down, that's fine. The wheel, is, the, the whole production line is coming down in speed. However, if one or more trims are slowing down, but another, at least one of the other trims is not slowing down, now we know something's wrong, right? That means the production line is still working at nominal speed because one of the wheels did not slow down but other wheels st started slowing down so something's definitely wrong and that's what the program does so this wheel is going to be wheel zero what the hell does it need ink okay wheel zero five now we know hey there's something going on here now let's do it for wheel one 161 minus 160 well that's one okay this guy is above the tolerance this this value is not above the tolerance okay sound the alarm so something's definitely wrong sound the alarm and it will keep keep on sounding the alarm until someone stops so stops the the wheel full, fully and the reason why i did that is i don't really want to you know give the Operators too much work. You know, you gotta turn on the alarm. You gotta turn on the alarm. Uh, turn off the alarm. Maybe you turn off and then you forget to turn it on. Uh, you know, it's a mess. So, you know, this while this is slowing down, the alarm will sound. You stop it with your hand, and it will stop. 
And that's pretty much it, I think.